Hey, welcome back to the Truly YouTube channel. I'm Chelsea, and this is episode three of the Yarn Podcast with No Name. I have been really excited to film this episode because knitting has been going really well. <laughs> I have been working on, well, I have so many fun upcoming projects and pieces that I've started or are, have kind of begun being in development are really exciting. And uh, it's been a month of perseverance, which is definitely a good thing when it comes to knitting. It's been a little bit of a crazy month. The beginning of the month was finals week at school, so I wrapped up winter quarter, had two weeks of spring break, and then just started my next class on Wednesday. Getting my school schedule together was really crazy. The professor that I wanted was kind of going on leave and nobody was quite sure what was going on, but I got into the class that I needed and I'm just taking one this quarter, so that will be nice. Yeah, I'm just, I'm excited for March to be over. April's gonna be a big month. I'm going to New York City next week to visit some friends and see a Broadway show that I bought tickets for back in 2019, just a few months before Broadway shut down for two years. So I'm really excited to go to New York next week and um, for the first time visit some yarn shops. Actually, that's a lie. I did go to um, Pearl Soho in like 20, 2017 or 2018 maybe. And that was before I was knitting or crocheting at the time. So I have been to Pearl Soho, which is now closed, I think, due to the pandemic. There's one I want to go to on the Upper West Side called Knitty City. And then one in the West Village called Knit and Needle. So I'm really excited about that. I will try my best to do a vlog while I'm in New York. I think for the time being, I'm just going to focus on doing the podcast like every three weeks or every month because I, I didn't feel like my last <laughs> vlog went, went that well. I don't have that eye yet of like what's interesting and what will make an interesting video. So for now, I think we'll stick to the monthly or so wrap ups of what I've been working on. And on that note, um, I think we can dive right into finished objects because you might have noticed, maybe not, but if you watched my previous podcast, um, that I'm wearing my novice sweater. I'm so happy with how it turned out. This is after washing and blocking which extended the sleeves about four inches. It was, I think it was about here um, <laughs> before I blocked it and now it's fully um, in the middle of my hand. So that's awesome. I did not do any measuring when I was blocking this sweater. I've read and seen a lot that you're supposed to like get out of measuring tape when you go to block something just to make sure it's like the finished measurement size and gauge. But this one, I just kept pressing the sleeve out because I had no sense of like where it started and how far I was pushing it out, but it's totally fine. The body didn't stretch out as much as I wanted it to, but I don't have a good sense of sizing yet at all. Um, I think for this one, I knit the size small and to be honest, like it's, it's a good size for this sweater, but when I buy sweaters and wear sweaters, I get everything oversized. When it comes to knitting, I keep wanting to knit smaller because I don't want to pay as much for more yarn. I know for sure the Knitting for Olive It's Not a Sweatshirt pattern, I got plenty enough yarn for a medium, which I'm definitely going to do for that, but I think I need to start like thinking ahead when it, when it comes to these things and um, really trying to visualize how something will look on my body and like comparing measurements to things I already have in my closet just to get a better idea of how it truly will turn out. But for this one I used, um, I mean I've definitely talked about it in my previous podcast, but just for the sake of being finished, I used um, Drops Air in pearl gray, which is like has a little bit of marbling and marled effect on its own. It's super soft. To me it is a little bit itchy um, where it's where it's touching my skin directly, but in the winter months I wore like a thermal underneath it. I likely won't wear this too often in the spring and summer. I sewed in the collar at the end. I couldn't figure out how to knit it together at the beginning and also wasn't sure if I wanted to leave it as a turtleneck type top. It fits perfectly in my wardrobe. I don't have any sweaters in this color right now. I used to. I had an Everlane sweater that was kind of similar to this, but it's so much more special to have one that I made myself. So this was super enjoyable to knit. I would highly recommend it to anyone, for especially for a first sweater. I you know, would knit it again. I don't know that I'll have time in the next few years, but to that point, as I like advance my skills as a knitter, I will likely not want to do something called a novice sweater again, but who can say? Do I have anything else to say about this sweater? I don't think so. I'm just really glad I got it done in time to wear for this episode. This is my first time wearing something that I knit. 
on the podcast. So my next finished object is my favorite pair of socks I have knit so far. And they, it's so funny, I've kind of named things, like this is called the novice sweater because it's a pattern. But these have become named the luau socks because that's the color of the yarn that I used to make them. This was my first time using two different yarn colors in my socks. So I did this kind of 10 row border up at the top and then a two by two rib for the leg and then a contrast toe. So I did use the um, vanilla socks pattern by Crazy Sock Lady, just kind of made up my own little accents here. I just think this is the prettiest yarn I've ever <laughs> seen. I did knit these two socks concurrently. I got another set of the Chowgu 9-inch circulars in the 2.25 millimeter size, and I really liked working these up at the same time. I did like, you know, half the leg on one, then cast the other one on. I did the heel, okay, let me get my terms right. I did the heel flap, heel turn, and gusset decreases on one, then swapped to the other one, and it just really worked nicely for me to get them both done um, kind of at the same time. And these took me 12 days to knit both socks, which is really good for me. I'm really happy with that amount of time. Yeah, I also think that they're the best socks that I've knit so far. My first pair was obviously my first pair, and then these ones just turned out exactly how I had envisioned them, even though I didn't have, you know, a specific pattern for the color changes and the ribbing. But yeah, I, I really like how this kind of design turned out, and I will... I would definitely make it again with a different um, combination. So I've been wearing these a lot. The yarn that I used for this one was the Olivia and Oliver Fibers in Luau. And then the contrast color is Waterfall. So those are my, believe it or not, first pair of socks that I finished this month. I finished two pairs of socks this month. I don't know how that happened. These ones, they're still kind of wet. I'm blocking them right now, but... These ones I just kind of threw on just because. Um, I got a two, size 2.5 millimeter um, nine inch circular and so I just threw these on because I had the yarn. Boy, what a difference does a quarter of a millimeter make. These socks turned out so much larger than my 2.25 millimeter socks. I had no idea a quarter of a millimeter could make that much of a difference. Um, maybe the yarn was a little bit thicker or bouncier, but um, it's just wild. I don't, I doubt you'll be able to see the difference. I don't know. I mean, obviously the ribbing kind of cinches up on this one, but I just can't believe how much larger these are. So these ones are made with um, Emma Yarns is the main color, and the color doesn't have a name. It's just called uh, March 2022's colorway. I think she does like a club, club sock yarn, but I got it from a local yarn store, um, in my area here in Bellingham. This is the first time I did a contrast heel. And for this one I used um, Willow on the Water, which is another local yarn dyer. And I think this is an unnamed green color because it came in my custom sock set. But I, <laughs> for some reason, did not enjoy making these. First of all, I'm not super happy with how the contrast color turned out. I mean, the green is a perfect match for the deeper greens in in the speckles for this, but I think just for spring's sake, I wish I would have done like kind of a, you know, soft like buttery yellow accent or even like, you know, a light meadowy pink. I don't know. Um, my sister started calling these my shamrock socks, so if only I had finished them for <laughs> St. Patrick's Day, but I did not. Yeah, so I don't think I'll be using my 2.5 needles as much as I thought I would. I think there's definitely some truth to finding your perfect uh, sock recipe. 2.25 is definitely my size. It feels way more comfortable in my hand for some reason. Um, and I like how the fabric works up a lot better. I think part of the fault of that is definitely this yarn. It's extremely soft, but there were a lot of times that it was super thick and bouncy almost feeling like a single ply and then it would get super tight and almost rigid there was kind of a lot of variation in the yarn thickness it just wasn't super pleasant to knit up so you know they turned out cute they're like some green socks i likely won't be reaching for them as much as my other socks and i didn't put them on the sock blockers because they were already so large i didn't want them to get any larger this one i followed the vanilla sock pattern exactly with the 20 rib single 20 row single rib cuff and then the contrast heel and toe. 
So, oh, and this was kind of funny because Crazy Sock Lady has a video about how to do contrasting heel and toe, which I did not watch before I did this. And all of my guesses were <laughs> about how to change the colors were exactly right. When you change the color on the heel, instead of going directly into the slip knit, slip knit pattern, you knit the first row across so that none of the uh, main color kind of like bleeds into it. So I did that correctly, and then I didn't want to cut the main um, color to have another end to weave in. So I ended up picking up the gusset stitches on this side first, and then knitting around. So the um, beginning of round was on the opposite side, which was kind of hard to get used to. So basically, I can't believe I finished both of these because of how hard of a time I was having, and I'm just glad they're over. So those are my three finished objects for the month. I'm really proud of myself for finishing a sweater and two pairs of socks. Wow. These ones took me 19 days because I didn't work on them as religiously as I did the Lua socks. Started them on the 10th and then finished them on the 29th, so those ones were not quite as quick of a knit. All right, and that will move us into whips for this episode, which I have a few that I'm really pumped about. And let's actually start with the crochet one. So I think at the end of last year, I made this <laughs> throw pillow cover and it's a 24 inch pillow in this really cute waffle stitch pattern and I bought two pillow forms but have only had this one um, pillow cover done so I've had one like bare pillow on my bed and then one nice pillow cover this had been too long so I did get started on the next one <sighs> barely long way to go for this I'm using um, an acrylic yarn it's just Lion's, Lion Brand Vanna's Choice in the color Barley. It's a really pretty kind of tweed, black, white, cream, brown yarn. Yeah, like I said, it's working up in this waffle pattern. I just finished another of uh, the first ball, so have to, oh, here we go. I finished the first ball up here, so I gotta weave in the next one. I'm just glad I started it because I've been putting this off for so long. And the way that I constructed it was just doing one huge rectangle, so it's like, you know, 20, 22 by 22, approximately inches. So it's about 44 inches long, um, which is quite a way to go from here. So that way I only had to seam up two sides and then put the zipper on the bottom because I did want to be able to wash them. I think it will go a little bit quicker than the last one. Actually, that's probably a lie because I keep putting this thing down to work on other projects. That's my first whip. I'm really... <laughs> really happy that I decided to start that so I can get it over with. Finish my cute uh, bed dressing. Dressing my bed. So my first knit whip is living in this cute Starlight Knitting Society bag that is so durable you uh, can't really close it. This is about as far as it goes, <laughs> which is too bad, but maybe over the years it will loosen up. But I started on the camisole number two by my favorite things knitwear. And we're about 10 centimeters into it. I'm really loving how this yarn is working up. This is Barnyard Knits fingering weight yarn in coffee beans. The cake is really cute too. Man, is this thing tedious. It's three by three by three ribbing. And it is so hard to get even tension on this thing. Um, so it's definitely going to be a little... I mean, it looks nice overall, but I'm a bit worried about when it stretches when I actually wear it. Um, because it's definitely been a test of my ability to do a nice 3x3 three three rib. But it looks good from afar, so I'm happy about that. I am going to have to shorten it quite a bit because... I don't know what I was thinking when I paired, decided to pair the skein of yarn with this project because it's about 100 yards too short for what I need. So instead of doing a 30 centimeter body, I think I'm going to go for 20. I have kind of a cropped camisole, but <laughs> at the same time, I don't have enough yarn and I totally miss... I got my projects confused. Like I was working on, I think, it might have been this, it might have been the Louisiana sweater, but... I had five centimeters in my mind, um, and so I started um, knitting the one by one ribbed hem to five centimeters, um, 
lo and behold, the pattern calls for two and a half centimeters <laughs> for the length of the uh, hem. So this it's way more than it's supposed to be, but I think that's fine. Maybe it didn't take as much yarn as the three by three rib. Maybe it'll save me some yarn. I don't know. But I remember when I bought this yarn, I was looking at the pattern in the store and I was like, oh yeah, this will work perfectly. I'm betting it was a yardage meterage confusion <laughs> scenario. I always have to Google, you know, meters to yards and I might have done it backwards or something, but the extra small in this calls for like at least 550 yards, I think, and I've got 450. <laughs> so we'll do our best. We'll see. I can always do, I don't know. We'll see. See how far we get, but I'm glad to finally have some traction going here. <laughs> I felt like I was knitting with ribbing forever and I just finally got past that certain point where it felt like I was making no progress and now I feel like we're finally getting somewhere so um, I'm hoping to have this done in April um because it'd be kind of fun to wear for spring and summer yeah and like I said I'm really happy with how the yarn is working up it doesn't seem to be pooling too badly just some nice kind of tonal variegation in there so that is my first knit whip. My second knit whip is going along great. You could probably already guess what it is. Sorry, I'm literally like dumping out my project bag. I should probably be more gentle. So I started on Petite Knits Louisiana sweater. This is the first time I've done raglan increases and I am just loving it. I'm having such a good time knitting this. It does have its own struggles because this is knit with I think a chunky yarn and size 13 needles, so I think it's a 9 millimeter, <sighs> and my hands get so sore knitting this up, like, it's so strange, let me see if I can, like, <laughs> reenact my pain, but, um, ho holding the knitting needles, even loosely, like, right here starts to get really, like, you know, twitchy and just kind of sore, so I really have to stretch a lot when I'm knitting this. Um, which is so funny and I feel like I've definitely heard some knitters um, say that like the the larger needles actually hurt more than the tiny ones which I feel like would be inverted for some reason but it's really fun to see it come together so fast but um, it's definitely like whoa you know knitting it is can be a little bit of a struggle okay my battery died but um, so for this one I'm using drops wish yarn in the color wheat and I really love the color. I think it's super pretty. Just a nice light neutral in exactly the shade it's called, wheat. So as you can see, I just split her sleeves last night. I've knit about maybe eight centimeters of the body from the arm. So this is supposed to be kind of a cropped sweater. Not this cropped, but I should probably actually measure pretty soon. How long is this? Supposed to be from the neckline right now. Let me just check the pattern real quick because I'm curious how far we have to go. Working around until the sweater measures 37 centimeters. So I have about eight more centimeters of the body to go, which is crazy. That's so fast. Um, but one thing I'm gonna try on this um, sweater, this one I knit the body all the way down um, until it was finished and then started on the sleeves. But um, Again, I feel like I talk about Knitted by Whitney all the time, but um, in one of her podcasts she said that she um, knits the body until her ball of yarn is done and then moves on to um, one of the sleeves just to kind of break things up. So, oh, that just reminded me, I need to buy, I was going to order the 9mm knitting needles on a 16 inch cable so I could do the sleeves because I don't want to do magic loop. Um, I might be able to get away with a 24. You know, we'll see. I'll... I'll put it on my needles today and see. I have actually done okay putting these five inch needles on a cable to make a 16 or I guess it'd be a little longer, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that. I'm really not happy with my ribbing, but okay, I have like, tell me if I'm crazy, but when I do one by one ribbing on this, on my socks, anytime, for some reason, the wrong side is so much better. So here's the, the right side, super uneven, and then the wrong side is like much nicer. <laughs> I don't, 
Am I crazy? Does that happen to anyone else? I almost wanted to like reverse it after I finished the collar because it looks so much nicer on the wrong side. Um, so I don't know if that's my imagination or if other people knit that way as well. Not as satisfying, super satisfying. So I, because I wasn't happy with my stitch evenness, I started the collar and redid it three times. For some reason, I just could not keep up with the tension on this collar. And then as I started to knit the yoke and the increases, I was just, I was like not <laughs> doing great. So like I said, I started and ripped this out about three times. And now I'm finally happy with um, the evenness of my stitches. And I know it's so bad, but for me, the best tension is no tension. <laughs> like I just let the, especially for this sweater in particular, I just like let the yarn go and just hold it like here when I need it. Like, I don't know why, but no tension has been the best tension for me so far in this, at least in this bulky weight sweater. So this one I'm hoping to finish up in the first half of April. I think it's definitely doable based on how chunky the yarn is and how quickly it's going. So, um, but yeah, it's just been so fun to try something different and how cute. They look like little, um, not cowrie shells, but what are those called? I always forget what the, maybe it is cowrie, but the raglan stitches almost look like little cowrie shells. And yeah, it's just crazy to me that this like right and left increase literally just put the sweater in a different direction and makes a sleep like just, I'm so excited to be learning more about construction. It makes me really happy about the variety of projects that I've selected so far um, because I am just like learning one new little thing at a time. So that's the Louisiana sweater. Um, that one I'm knitting up an extra small um, just based on the measurements and I don't really own anything that fits like like the Louisiana sweater is supposed to do, so I feel like the smallest size will probably be okay because of the kind of odd fit. Um, I feel like making it oversized would just look a little strange, but we'll see at the end. I think those are all my current whips that I'm actively working on. I do have a couple of yarns wound up for my next projects, so maybe we'll just chat quickly about that because I'm really excited to cast on my next socks, which I'm not sure how this cake disaster happened, but we'll just ignore that, which is going to be in the February Club colorway from the Yarn Addict Co. in this color, Cedarberries, which is so pretty. And I'm going to be pairing it with no, I'm hesitating. Maybe you guys can help me. So I was going to do a contrast something, I'm not sure what, with this um, winter tonal from Sorelli Yarn. And I'm not going to remember the color, but I'll put everything in the description. So I was going to do like maybe a heel and toe or maybe the cuff and toe, cuff and heel, I don't know. Um, because these greens complement each other so nicely. They're both kind of this like warm ivory based green. But then I have an actual ivory also from Sorella's Winter Tonals, um, which is a set I've just been using for sock accents. So I'm not sure if I should do like, you know, a cuff and toe in this and then the heel in the green or ju maybe just do the, the white color. But I just feel like the green is so perfect with this green so I don't know if you guys can help me like how would you knit up these socks like this is gonna be the main color how would you use these accents would you use one would you use both I don't know I need a little guidance but these are the next socks I'm casting on I'm so excited to get going on them I'm gonna be doing um obviously some vanilla socks but I was thinking about doing a three by one um knit pearl um pattern for the body and I just think it will knit up so pretty. So let me know your thoughts about the contrast colors on these ones because I really want to get going on them ASAP. These guys aren't wound up yet, but for another one of my April projects is going to be Friday Knit's newest pattern, which is the Sweetheart Ribbed Tank. I accidentally called it the Ripple Tank in uh, my last video, which is a Jessie Made pattern that I also have on my to-do list, but no. So this is one I got in Portland barnyard knits um cabin in the snow yarn 
So this is going to become Friday Night's Sweetheart Ribbed Bralette, I think is what it's called. And so I'm gonna be casting that on in April, which I'm really excited about. I'm gonna try to get a lot more done on the camisole number two before I start another ribbed bralette camisole situation. So this might be like the second half of April, but I have just been so eager to kick up this yarn and get started on this project. I'm so excited to see like these pinks these pinks come out and there's just so many fun colors going on in this in this yarn so that's another one I'm really looking forward to and then truly what I believe is the PA steer resistance of this whole episode I swatched I know I have been so eager to cast on sweater number one in this amazing Surrey silk from Olivia and Oliver Fibers antique rose i just have been so eager to get started on this ever since i got the yarn uh one or two months ago i wanted to pair this with a plain pink color just to kind of um, even out all the variegation and different tones in here to kind of bring them all together but there are so many different pinks within this shade that I I didn't know what kind of pink I wanted to go for like whether I wanted to do kind of a one of the rosier mauve colors or a lighter blush color and so I had to I mean I have been doing hours of research looking at different pink surrey silks and mohairs and looking at every pattern made with them on Ravelry and finally narrowed it down to two knitting for olive shades. One is rose clay which is a really light um, kind of beigey I guess clay colored pink so kind of a lighter shade and then the other one is dusty rose which kind of is more of that mauve shade. Look at these color swatches they're so pretty. Oh my gosh. When I tell you I've been staring at these for minutes at a time during the day, I wish the sun was out right now because they're just dreamy. Okay, let me hold them up one at a time. So this is the swatch I made with rose clay. It's turned. It's a really light, almost neutral base and in a way almost washes out the shades of the, of the antique rose. Oh. Man, I wish it was sunny. I just want this a little bit brighter. Maybe I can get a clip in here with it being sunny, but... So this is the rose clay. It turned into a very kind of light pink. I don't know. Against my skin. And then this is the um, dusty rose. Which is a bit deeper. Um, kind of brings out more of the mauve shades. And I was really on the fence about this for like two days, but... Looking at it now that I've made my decision it's like nine day like hello so i think this is the clear winner for me let me know if you guys would choose the same i just think it has so much more visual interest and just feels a little richer and i wish you guys could feel how soft this is it's so lovely and just airy and weightless perfection i cannot wait for this to be a whole sweater like with the elbow sleeves and the like floatiness i'm so excited yes these are going to be wed in holy matrimony of sweater number one i'm just so in love with how this antique rose caked up this scared me when i opened it it just seemed so purple and dark but truly like when you pair them together I just cannot wait to get going on that. That sweater is going to get started after I finish the, or at least get really close to finishing the Louisiana sweater. I even did really good on my stitches in my swatch. Like, what is that about? So this is not a real swatch because I'm not going to wash and block it and then measure it. It's not so much a gauge swatch as it is just a color testing swatch. They were pleasant to work up. And as long as I don't need the yarn, I might keep it around as a little display. To knit in the round, I used Knitty Natty's um, little in the round trick. She's got a video about it and it was super simple and probably took me like 20 minutes, so highly recommend. Um, after my plans, which I guess I kind of reversed the order here, 
Um, these are two of my few, quite few yarn acquisitions. So these I ordered from a local yarn store in Texas called The Sated Sheep. There's a few places that carry knitting for olive in the States that I like to order from, but um, they had free returns. So I wasn't sure if, if I opened one of them and it was immediately like, no, that color's not gonna work. Um, I'd be able to send it back, but I definitely did want to swatch both of them. So, so rose clay, I will save for another project in the future. It is a really beautiful color. I already stored my two new. Oh, oh boy. Okay, so if you watch my podcast before, you'll know I am a card carrying member. No, not card carrying, but avid member of Long Dog Yarns One Club to rule them all. Lord of the Rings <laughs> Yarn Club, and so the marked colorway is called Doran's Bane, which apparently I'm a super casual Lord of the Rings fan because I didn't realize that was the name of the Balrog in Fellowship of the Ring, but it is so obvious <laughs> where this yarn inspiration came from. So it's this incredible colorway of deep maroon and yellow and brown, some almost gray tones. I think some hits of black in there, but wow, these socks are gonna be crazy, okay? I I don't know if I'll do these on their own or do like a black contrast color with it, or just like a deep kind of like muddy gray, like angry ball rock color. <laughs> but wow, this, this is such a striking color. I've never purchased or owned anything in this shade before. And it just thrilled me when I opened it. It's, it's so unlike my usual. It's a little off-brand for True Lane, if I may. But, oh uh, yeah, it's just so cool. So, and since I have my, for the sake of, why not? I'll just hold it up next to my other. Oh, I got different bases. I want more bounce sock. Okay, this one is sock yarn. This is last month's colorway. 80% merino, 20% nylon, 400 yards. This one is bounce sock, which is 75% merino, 25% nylon, and 463 yards. Yards. <laughs> 463 yards. Anyway, they're completely different. Look at the twist on Council of Elrond. And then this one has a much softer twist. This one's very defined and this one is not. Oh, that's so interesting. I had no idea I did that. They look completely different. This is really fascinating to me because I, I'm betting my shamrock socks that was that weird, like really big yarn seems a lot similar to this one. And this one seems quite a bit thinner. Do you see that? Anyway, so this was my March acquisition for the one club to rule them all. I think my last yarn acquisition is the Yarn Addict Co's uh, March, what is her club called? Nature in Macro. So this one is called Sunrise Dew. This one is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 400 yards. And this is such a nice color. So it's got some berry shades, a bit of green, and some orange, and a lot of ivory. Or maybe this is like a cream. I'm learning so much about colors and color theory from all these yarn dyers. It is so cute. Oh, I should have got the... Where's the card? Here's the card that inspired it. Or the photograph that inspired it, rather. And the yarn. Yeah, so it's just so cool to see her photographs come to life in the form of yarn. I just think these will be such beautiful socks. I, every time I get a new sock yarn or sock set, I really am inspired to learn like a new stitch pattern for socks, like do something a little more interesting than just the vanilla. But I don't know what that is quite yet. Like the plain stock in it also just really lets the yarn shine. I don't know, it might be worth a swatch to see, you know, how this yarn works up in different stitches. I don't know. So that's really pretty. Let's see. Oh, I should talk about the book. Where's the book? I have two books to talk about today. All right. So the book that I bought in my last podcast, I've already finished it. Um, I thought this would take me a few months to read, but I 
breeze through it right away. So this was A Stash of One's Own by Clara Parks, who's apparently really famous. I'm learning more and more about her every day. Um, but she's written several books, and then this one is just an anthology of several different writers writing about their stashes. Um, and I totally recommend this for any yarny like me. I recognized a few people writing in here, but mostly Amy Ame, La Bien Ame, that person. Um, she had a really nice story in here. Um, even if you get it from the library or just download an ebook, like these, if you're a knitter and you're obsessed with yarn, you will like these stories. Some of them were moving, some of them were funny, and um, they're just from people who get us. If you know what I mean. And then another book that I read was The Friday Night Knitting Club. This is kind of an older book. It's chunky, like there's quite a bit in here. It could have been a lot shorter, I'm not gonna lie. I've just been so obsessed with <laughs> all things yarn and knitting, so this was a cute novel to read if you want to make the commitment and a little bit slog through this. The writing style is a little choppy. It was just a nice story about a yarn shop set in New York City and um, the people who are in the knit club there, so. That was cute. <laughs> Can't believe I read two knitting books this month, but that's life. The Clara Parks book about a stash really inspired me because, you know, as I've been kind of building up my stash in order to create the knit projects that I want to create, even though it might not seem like it, I have shown a lot of restraint and there's a lot that appeals to me about not having a stash. I think that I will be someone who always has some sock yarns on hand because knitting socks has been the most enjoyable thing for me so far. So just to always have something to cast on, I think I'll definitely keep a few skeins of sock yarn around, but after I work through um, the yarn that I've bought for the projects that I've intended, I don't really want to keep a stash of, you know, sweater quantities or um, that kind of thing because then it gives me the liberty to when there is a special collection that I want to um, you know pre-order from or I find you know a project that I'm really eager to make I can go get that yarn at that time not feel like guilty about oh I have all this stuff in my stash but which would kind of work for this project you know I want to be able to go out and get exactly what I have in mind for that project not having a stash would really help with, like I said, just feeling that liberty to go out and do that um, or order from a super special collection that's launching, like the Sorella Netflix collection that launched last week. I have been really good about not <laughs> ordering yarn, but as soon as I saw the You've Got Mail colorway, I had to have it, so I ordered that one. Yeah, I kind of felt like I could because I'd been so good about not spending on um, other things, and then I do have a few other orders coming for some gifts that I'm going to be knitting up, which is really special because I do have so many knitworthy people in my life. So far, I've only been knitting for me, so that will be fun to expand a little bit. That's all for today. I'm really having so much fun knitting, and when I checked this morning, there was about 200 and I think 25 um, total subscribers for True Lane's YouTube channel, which is awesome. So thank you guys for watching. I'm tbh like super embarrassed about my last video i was like i i don't know what i'm doing and i was just like you know what just put it out there whatever and now i'm like kind of want to take it down but i won't <laughs> it's all it's all gross i don't know i think it has something to do with my age like i just feel like i should be so settled and good at everything and know you know who i am what i'm doing i don't in this season of my life i just live in a basement and knit and like that's not super interesting so you know i was gonna try to or at least I intended to do like kind of a video for each project. To me, I just, I can't, there's not enough, you know, to make a full video about something. And then honestly, like I really value my privacy. So it's like, I feel like doing these podcast updates is just a way to combine everything into one like direct sit and talk video. And so I think that's what I'm gonna be doing for a while. Like I said, I'm going to New York next week, so I'm gonna try and vlog that trip because it's something out of the ordinary, it's something really fun, so I'll do my best. <laughs> even if it, even if I just take random clips, I'll try to string them together into something for you guys to watch. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please feel free to subscribe, the notification bell, click it if you wanna be notified when I post a new video, and uh, what else? I hope you guys are as excited about your knitting projects as I am about mine. Um, I'd love to hear what you're making if you want to leave a comment. Maybe you were knitting on something when you hit play on this video. So let me know what you're working on and I will catch you in my next video. 
happy knitting. Mm -hmm.